I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. Rock Talk. Three, two, one. We'd like to welcome you to another edition of Grok Talk, brought to you by New Hampshire's leading conservative blog site, GraniteGrok.com. We are your fear, extremist, right-wing, hard-charging, gun-toting, opinionated, outspoken, rabble-rousing, letter-writing, radio, microphone-stomping, conservatives, and rational libertarians. So get ready for more news and opinion you could only get from GraniteGrok.com. Grok Talk. All right, it is Grok Talk for December 13th, 2014. This week it is uh, Grokapalooza, Grokatopia, Groksters Assemble. It's a squirrel. Thank you very much for the squirrel. That's fabulous. This is Grok Talk brought to you by the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers and the co- <laughs> and GraniteGrok.com. He's trying to get that out of here. You're screwing me up. Um, please check us out on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, TuneIn, iTunes, and Spreaker. You can also see us on YouTube and... Uh, you stream as well as oh, it's a big nut. Look at that. Oh wait, no, that's a donut hole. And uh, Facebook and Twitter. Just search Granite Rock. As you, it's if you missed the pre-show, it's your loss because it, it was awesome. <laughs> Skip is here. Jane Cormier is here, and Susan Olson is here, and Mike is here from India. Hi, Mike. You still there? Very good morning to you all. Yes, good, good, good morning to us. Good I'm evening to you. Time. Way over there. Ten and a half hours, did you say? He's ten and a half hours ahead of us, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, Only in India would they screw up <laughs> the time. Really. <laughs> ten and you guys half made hours. such a good decision to leave, truly. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, we... Uh, they decided to split the baby, literally, and uh, draw a half-hour line down the middle instead of having two... You're beeping again. I think somebody's trying to come in. Uh, somebody trying to call in on line one? It is. If you're trying to call in on line one, please call in on line two, 603-715-9689. That is somebody trying to call in. I bet you it's Kimberly. It probably is. I gave her this number. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on 9689, guys. Oh, you are. What's the other one? I forget. Uh, no. I can't hear you now, Mike. Nine zero. You sound really weird. Uh, we're lo we're losing you there. Whatever you're on, it's a sad phone. There you go. Now you're better. Try again. It's nine zero. No. See, now somebody beeped you in. All right. Well, you know what? Did you want to call on the other line, Mike? Since this person isn't listening to us. I can call on the other line. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay. Well, let's skip do his thing. See, I try to do a show with that technical nonsense on the air, but I can't do it. <laughs> It just doesn't happen. So anyway, this week we'll do, we had uh, so many Whiskey Tango Foxtrots to choose from. We're going to give you a couple of those, and then we're going to tell you who the winner is, because we just got the winner. Sometimes it's the last possible minute. Something comes in, and it's so absurd that everything else just gets pushed off the bus or whatever, or kicked off the island, and, and there we are. So um, we are here to talk about what the heck ever crosses our minds. Um, Jane and Susan are here, and we are expecting Hello. Kimberly uh, Morin to call in, and uh, okay. somebody's calling. Yeah, take, uh, take this. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Who's that? Which line are you on now? And uh, Scott Morales Hello. is supposed to be here, and Ed Nail might make it, maybe not, and uh, we'll see whoever else is available. Okay, well, now we've got Mike on number two and Kimberly on number one. All right, well, this is going to be I interesting. I was supposed to use this number. And, so yes, you were. I'm, I'm you were. Yep, that's my fault. <laughs> okay, well, we'll bring you all on. Hey, it's on. It's me and man. That's my fault. Now uh, everybody's here. Hi. Hi, everybody. Everybody. Okay. Uh, this is going to be kind of a, a crazy dance on the board to uh, keep the echoing us away, but we're going to do the best we can. So uh, we've been talking to Mike, so we'll talk to Kimberly for a moment. Kimberly, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. It's good to know that you're good given all the crazy things that are going on around here. <laughs> and I was listening, but I I couldn't hear what number Mike was saying, so that's why I didn't um, call in a different That's okay. I, I, I've had this number taped over my laptop camera for a year now, and I don't even remember which line it is. It's line one, huh? Hey, Kimberly, guess what? Oh, you're not on. Sorry. There Kimberly, guess what? What? Susan brought us all sugar. Oh, God. <laughs> so we're going we're to digitize a donut hole for you, a munchkin, and, uh -huh. and we'll send it down, down your way. And we're Thank back. You. <laughs> <laughs> Squirrels and uh, donut holes. you got to so come anyway. close. 
There you go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> all right, you'll see that in a couple seconds. Okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> We're serious here. We are very serious. Oh, we welcome, have to. Welcome to Grok Talk, brought to you by. Okay. So, where do you want to start? I think Kim. Why don't we, why don't we repeat the WTF of the week? Uh, which is Scott, Scott Brown saying how great uh, Jennifer Horn is uh, for the price Jane, of whoever has the phone, let's read this. Here's oh. our here's our whisky tang whiskey tango foxtrot of the week. Uh, just came in, hot off the wire. This is fresh fresh press, and Jane's going to read it for us. Oh as, my! As she pulls it up if she can find it. I got it. I got okay. it. You just surprised me there at the last second. Boom, baby. Okay. Oh, this tech. All right. So this is actually from the New Hampshire Journal. Okay. Posted by John DeStazio. And uh, it's a, it's an article. Yeah, you did. I got it from you. And okay. uh, so it talks about how one of Smith's, uh, well, it talks about Testerman and how she's supporting Horn and all the plethora of others who have come out of the woodwork now to say that Jennifer Horn's the best thing since sliced bread. Um, and then we have... Did they say white bread? Oh, well, I'm who sure knows? it's racist. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure, you know. Whole grain? So hmm. then it goes into um, Brown on board. Scott Brown, in an interview, told Granite Reports that Horn deserves to be re-elected. Look at... Yeah. You're the only person oh, clapping. Yeah, you are. Wait, I might have some applause somewhere here. I'd have to go look for it. Go ahead. Keep it going. It says, look at what she's accomplished, Brown said, and she doesn't get paid a penny. She was everywhere during the campaign. Everywhere. And she had a real challenge of trying to unify the party after challenge. the primary. Fail. Epic. The results were that we had a massive swing in the House, and we picked up a seat in the Senate, not yours, and we flipped, <laughs> <laughs> and we flipped the Executive Council, and a lot of other races were competitive. What more could you ask for of someone who does the job for nothing? For the flag, Thanks really. For, for the, the flag. flag. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the, here's the best one. Not everyone may agree with her, but at least she gives them their day in the sun. I am altering the beat. Their <laughs> <laughs> day, their day in the their sun. Their day in the sun and the opportunity to get their message out. Thank you, Jennifer Horn. She's better than me and many others when it comes to dealing with the different factions of the party. Is that the biggest lie that you've ever heard today? Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I think Steve has now mastered his sound bites. Okay, so. Oh, I'm wait, wait. This is Jennifer Horn we're talking about, yes. right? I should play this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but. Okay, now listen. This is the best part. This was the one that capped it for us, I think. So she's better than me and many others when it comes to dealing with the different factions of the party, he said. And come the next election, if we don't have unity. It will be a big problem. Rut row. <laughs> so, from the lips of someone. Wow. Say again, Mike. No, I just Jane had more to read. Keep going, Jane. Let, let, let me let me do this mm -hmm. one. God, mm -hmm. this is this. You, you cannot make this stuff up. Although apparently they have. <laughs> um, <laughs> Active in the primary. Look for Brown to be active in the presidential primary campaign, but he said he will not endorse until much later in the process. Brown said he plans to set up roundtable discussions between any candidate who reaches out to him and key activists and state leaders so they can make present. <laughs> <laughs> no surprise, but Brown is already backing Ayotte for re-election, oh. calling her one of the brightest stars, if not the brightest star, in the Senate. It's important to keep her, he said, acknowledging that she could have a tough race in a presidential election year in New Hampshire. Good grief. Mm -hmm. is, is, is he in, in New Hampshire still? Is he still here or has he moved on? Uh-oh, we lost somebody. No, that's me. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so if the phone rings, it's yeah, yeah, just busy. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. think so. You know, I did ask. That, I've asked that question twice now on Granite Rock. Where is he? Nobody's heard a word. This is the first thing we've heard from him, and he could have sent us that from DC for all we know. He could have sent it from you. India. India, he could have. Mike, ma- ma- wait a minute. Can I make a side tangent here? Yeah, I, oh, as if we haven't uh, got no, enough I, of those I already. Not, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have not run into Mr. Brown here yet, and no, he's still not praying for me. Okay, I didn't think so. <laughs> yeah, that that busy sound yeah that could be another wtf you know i'm a fair point customer go ahead call my house see what happens yeah and then you call them and this is what you get yeah. that's basically it we were supposed to have our phone fixed we called saturday last saturday we were told a repairman would come out between monday and thursday and then debbie's going sideways over this and she called again yesterday you didn't show up oh we no longer have a close date on your ticket now, this is compared to, I don't know whether you saw this in WMUR, the poor lady out in Stoddard, whose phone line <laughs> fell down onto her driveway, has been down for three weeks. The guy finally shows oh, up. Now, God. this is like high, high phone wire. They sent a guy out in a van and a ladder. Oh, well, there God. you go. And he said, well, I'm not going to be able to help you. And uh, Well, but in case you want to do this yourself, here's a box of wire. And, it, you know, he holds up this box of wire that's like this, like... She could have just brought her two cans and a string. (laughs) That's what we have. That's what you have. Oh, my God. So, so, uh, I think we've covered... That's the union, exactly. And, of course, the, Ray Buckley just said they support the union, so they supported Nashua not having any phone or Internet yesterday or Thursday or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, you know, that's great. That's good well, to know. I'm, I'm Shutting playing. down government. Government shutdown. Democrats support government, government shutdown, shutdown in Nashua. Yeah. yeah. Now, does that make them terrorists and extremists like they were calling the Republicans? Maybe. Maybe. That'll time? make them racists, right? Right. <laughs> <They're Yeah>. racist. <laughs> oh, 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 there was, there was a, a beautiful image from the Senate. Elizabeth Warren and Ted Cruz huddle behind the Senate, uh. is the line. Uh, yeah. Apparently, somebody said that because they both opposed the Cromley bus for dis- different reasons. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> that doesn't mean they're on the same page. No, no. Good. And I'm not no. talking about a congressional page, for those of you who remember ooh, that ooh, far back. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute. I'm going to throw Ouch. up here. <laughs> All right. So, um, obviously, things are a little crazy around here. Uh, and, and, of course, our... Our motto has been for a long time, but Susan sort of boiled it all down to a bumper sticker for us, which was, um, you know, uh, screw, screw DC, DC save, save New Hampshire, Hampshire. Yeah. and that's kind of always been our motto. I mean, it's always been my motto. I mean, One you know, of Skip our likes to talk about how I talk about state stuff so much, which I haven't done lately, but as a general rule, if you look at the scope of the 5,300 posts or however many I have, most of them have to do with something that's a little bit more local. And... Um, uh, I think, as a rule, that's what we do. You know, we're really very interested in local government. You know, James O'Keefe was here last week, and he told us basically he applauded us for the advantages that we have as far as transparency. I mean, we can find the bills, we can see who sponsored, and we can look at who's. You know, we have a, a, an ability to see a lot more things about government. You know, we always talk about being able to go down, knock on a door, talk to our rep. You know, we can go to state house hearings and and give testimony uh, when they allow us to. Um, and. Uh, so we have a lot of options and advantages that most other states don't have. And so that's good for us. So that's why, excuse me, we can focus on local stuff because we have access to local stuff. So we're going to continue to have access. I think we've opened up some new avenues of access in the yeah. last couple of days and weeks since since Pond Jasper got his, his, uh, his, 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 his fanny uh, um, anointed into the speaker's mm-hmm. chair. And uh, all the chaos that's created has been great for us as far as bloggers are concerned. But um, The only question will be is can we keep up? Because I'll, I'll tell you, the, the best thing I want to do at night after taking care of everybody else's problems, I want to sit down and I just want to write. Mm-hmm. And you probably notice I've been rather absent the last couple of few weeks. Because you're busy. I, I Working the phones, man. I, Working you know, the phones. And this is something that I have to learn how to do because, frankly, I suck at personal networking. I really do. I, I'm I'm a old school code pounder. Just give me a screen and a keyboard, and I'm happy forever. The same thing with being a blogger. But I am trying to say, all right, if we're going to do more and better things for the state, hmm. I have to push myself out of my comfort zone. And yeah, I've been. A lot of people are calling it, and you're right. Uh, 
you said that you were getting called. You're getting called. You're getting called. I get called. emails. You get emails and tweets. I mean, people are calling me, and I don't know who they are. I don't pick my phone up, and if they don't leave a, leave a message, I don't call them back. So too bad. Yeah. You know. But all of a sudden, well, I, we're I, I, and uh, and one one rep tracked me down in India to yeah, tell me he I know. was ready to burn the party to the ground. So <laughs> what does that mean? I keep hearing that too. You know, um, we're we're having a great time here. It but means we rock. The question, the real question <laughs> here is, is that the the one thing I'm taking away from the many folks that are contacting me through all sources, not just phone calls, is that they are so disgusted by what has happened and they feel like there is no choice or option for them. What do we do? Kim Kimberly, do you have anything to add on this? <laughs> and, and actually, gonna, actually, hang on, hang on, hang on. You know what? I want you to talk in a second, Kimberly. We're going to take 60 seconds. We're going to come back and we're going to get your input, which could take the rest of the segment because you know a lot of people and a lot of stuff. We'll be right back. Hang on a second. Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Gerard at Large in the Morning, the Manchester area's only locally owned, locally operated, focused, and interested, riveting radio show heard live every Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 on 90.7 FM WLMW, New Hampshire Family Radio, and available 24-7 live or archived at GerardAtLarge.com. Be sure to tune in. This is the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. We're located at 8 North Main in Concord, New Hampshire. This is the repository for all things conservative and municipal. So if you have a problem in your town, your school, your budget committee, the right to know law, and now the top of our list is voter fraud. you have a tip for us, some information for us, you want to join or help us out, cnht.org. All right, Crock Talk, that's us. Brought to you by GraniteGrock.com and the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. Please check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Search Granite Grock, and you can listen to this in past programs on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, TuneIn, iTunes, Spreaker, and I'm done with my radio voice. Welcome back. All the lines are busy. We have people everywhere. We got people from India. We got people from different parts of New Hampshire. We got people in the studio. And we want to talk to Kimberly Morin. Hi, Kim. Bar Hi. Lee. Kim Birdley. <laughs> like I said, no. Susan brought in sugar. Oh, I, I, my coffee is like sugar and cream with coffee flavor. This is not what I need. Thank you. Although, I haven't even finished my first cup of espresso yet, so well, you guys yeah, are lucky. I, I had to... I had to do a cleanse and I couldn't eat for 24 hours basically. And I yes, yesterday afternoon after my procedure, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm already halfway through my first bottle of Mountain Dew. Oh. All right. Anyway, so oh, Kimberly, God. we were talking. Obviously, people who are listening and we're talking about, we would like your try to focus and, and get some input <laughs> on this because there's so many places you could go. Go ahead. Oh, you, you kind of just went, and I didn't even hear the last thing you said. Oh, just, uh, yeah, we want your input. That's why you're here. You know. Start broadly like, and focus after that, because there's. <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to try not to, I'm not, I'm trying not to swear. Oh, um, please don't. Just because, you know, <laughs> children no, friendly. People are, people are really, like Jane said, disgusted. They're really mad. They're really um, frustrated. Of, about what's going on in the New Hampshire GOP, and this isn't something that just happened because of the Jasper thing. This is something that's been going on for a while that people are seeing, and they really, they've had it. They're sick of it. That's very true. Um, and then, of course, you write at the Examiner. Um, you do some radio with Rich Gerard. Um, you She's have also a new writer for The Federalist. For The Federalist. Oh, the yeah. Federalist? Congratulations. Yes. Yes. The Federalist Papers. It's not the Fed. There's, there's two different ones. Oh, okay. Oh, congratulations. Good for you. Thank you. And she writes for us, too, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and um, so, I, I, I mean, you, you've probably, and you actually do some journalism. I mean, you, you go out and talk to people and call people, and, you know, I don't have that kind of time. Um, so I really just write stuff and see who gets pissed off. That's kind of my style. <laughs> and then they reach, they reach out to me, and they do. <laughs> so... But, um, so, Kimberly, I have a question for you, because you've been ca covering pretty carefully about the behind the stage, behind the curtain stuff that's been going on with the Jasper debacle. And, um, you know, what, what the thing that bothers me is that, just like you said, it's all been cumulative. You know, there's been so many 
Um, the, the, the party has taken so many hits, rightfully so, in the past three years anyway. And now this one is sort of the capper of the capper. What do you see as alternatives? Just from hearing everything that you're hearing, I mean, what are alternatives out there for us? That's, that's where the problem lies, is what are the alternatives? Um, and, and I don't, I don't, I, obviously I can't see that. Somebody from within the party has to see that or step, step up and say, hey, you know what, I'm the alternative. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who that is, and I don't think a lot of people know who that is. But um, that's, that, that, that's the big question, is like, who's going who's gonna to take that place and, and take that position and that role? to lead the party and everyone in the party, not just part of the party. Right. And I think that's going to be rather hard to do because unlike what Brown said, you know, obviously we are seen as the distaff step stepchild of the Republican Party. Those of us who write at Granite Rock if we are in the Republican Party. Um, and they, they see us as, well, they see us like the Democrats do, as right-wing extremists that they'd rather have us drop dead at the drop of a hat only because we actually try to hold them to account because we are standing on rock bed mm -hmm. principles of the Constitution and as well as the GOP party platform. But, you know, one of the th it's sometimes hard to, to listen to somebody like Brown or Jennifer Horn when they loudly proclaim that there's unity in the party when they know darn gone well there's a simmering battle oh. underneath that lid. And the party is still pretty much, as far as I can tell from the people that are talking to me, that probably aren't talking to Horn or Brown, that there's a 50-50 split and there's a lot of discontent. I, you know, I wrote a post, uh, we are so thankful for Jennifer Horn being NHGOP mm. chair, but I put in a little soliloquy there. You have made them, made them not to care. And I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again, where I told a New Hampshire state senator female that People are dropping out, they're, they're leaving the party, they're not going to do anything. And the exclamation was, well, then the Democrats will win. I yeah. said, you've made them not to care. They're tired of putting in their time, their effort, their right. money, and not seeing the results given our principles in past legislation. But the Democrats will win. Right, that's and always I, the response. And that, How you're they, right. they did win. The they Democrats win. elected the Speaker, for Christ's sake. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> oh, my God. Look, this but, is what I wrote yesterday. We've been warning Republican voters about rhinos, the infestation, for some time now, and we said they needed to be dealt with. This is what we get right. for not paying attention and just, oh, it's no big deal. Kim yeah. Kimberly, I'm gonna, I want to come back to you, and then i got a question from Mike. But, Kimberly, I've been also saying for a, two memes that I, I want to bring up. Consistency breeds trust, yields votes. And I think what we saw were a lot of people, not in the brown horn part of the party, brown getting exactly. I know. Stop. Just, stop stop it now. On that. But here's the thing. Here's how you could almost tell. So they make this bend over. Yeah. Here's here's the other half, where you, where you can tell what away. half of the party you're in. The first part says winning is only a precursor, mm -hmm. and like you said, they're only concerned with the winning. Right. They're only concerned with the winning. The yeah. other half goes to the other half of that meme. Winning is only a precursor. It is what you do afterwards that's important. Right. And you see the principled people, the grassroots for the most part, saying, what are you going to do? And they're looking at this going, this is not what, why we voted you in. And they're going to come back and they're going to say, you have made us not to care. Which is what has happened. But you know what? The vacuum of leadership is is the issue that I think it's is driving great all of it. Sound. This, it is this. the great sucking sound because I don't have one of those. I'm when sorry. you talk about Grok being, you know, <sighs> on the grassroots of the grassroots here, keeping, you know, keeping the dialogue open and talking about, I believe that it's not a fifty-fifty split. I truly believe that we are in the majority, but those folks that have been so disengaged and that are so jaded and rightly so because of the power mongering, it isn't even about winning. I think that it's about just staking the claim on their little section of power and and everything, everything goes into keeping that little little square of power. It's all power brokering and we, what has happened is the folks that typically have supported conservatism in New Hampshire are, are feeling such a void of someone that they can get behind to fight. They don't know how to do it. Guys, here's the problem. When you have, and you guys are, Repo I'm not a Republican. You, everybody knows. And I may not cool. be, sir. I may not be. Uh-oh. Rut-roll. What I was going to say is, 
this is what you have. And even Indies pay attention to this stuff, too. When you have people like Morse and Bradley and Stiles and Forrester voting for freaking Obamacare's Medicaid expansion, mm-hmm. which was not only against the party platform, but against what the majority of people in New Hampshire wanted. Right. There's no difference between the party. Right. When you see no difference, you get up, you're not going to vote. That's what a lot, a lot of people didn't vote for Brown for that reason. And I'm talking Indies. I'm not talking Republicans who couldn't stand him because he's a lightweight Dem. I'm talking about Indies. Lightweight. Indies. But you know, Kimberly, believe what's interesting, too, in the last presidential election, and I was doing some reading trying to figure out how that vote really came out, the independents actually did come out for you know, for the Republican in the last presidential race, it was the conservatives that screwed that race. The conserv four million of them stayed home. That's how we lost. That's how Romney lost. Oh, it's it- more, far more than well, that nationwide. Uh, now, 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 let me lay the blame of this squarely at one set of feet at the bottom of a short body. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gee, who could that be? Um, who could that be? Yes, past the Travelocity cap. Um, so, not, o- not only did Sununu Sr., in his work as a surrogate for Romney, in alienate an awful lot of people by sliming their pro- preferred primary candidate so that after he won, he wasn't going to have any friends. But let us not forget, Sununu Sr. was the guy who, with his collaboration with Dick Darman and his no new Texans, uh, no new taxes promise no being new broken, Texans. cost, yeah, cost <laughs> Bush Sr. his re-election. He also, at the 2012 convention, alienated the libertarians so badly that we saw sign writing on the side of Romney's final campaign stop that basically said there wasn't a dime's worth of difference between Obama and Romney and don't bother. Mm -hmm. So the conservatives and libertarians were were both burned by the same people uh, who uh, basically used unconscionable tactics to shut them out. And feeling shut out, they stayed home. And it goes to another meme. We may not win, but you will certainly lose. When you hear, when I hear these calls that we're all unified, simply because Republicans won, they're glossing over and giving credit to people and to an entity that doesn't really deserve it. So Nunu did this back in 2010. We're seeing Brown do, trying to do the same thing for Horn. But I got news for you. There's a lot of grassroots folks that have done the, the diligent and grunt work to make a lot of this happen. And I will tell you that we're, we're just about ready to get double-crossed again based on a couple of things that people told me last night. So here's the deal in, one, in just two sentences. You've got to do it in two sentences. So. The pressure being applied to Jasper is going to have him resign. Well, guess who steps up as speaker? And this was all planned yeah. behind the scenes, and it's a double, double cross because the Democrats are about to get double crossed as well. All right, that's Grok Talk. We'll be right back with more of this in about three minutes. Stay tuned. whether she still supports Obamacare. Senator Jean Shaheen said, Yes, I do continue to support the law. We're beginning to see some positive results. How can Senator Shaheen say we're seeing positive results when 22,000 of our neighbors have already lost their health insurance? What's worse, the Boston Globe reports the state's only health insurance provider radically reduced the number of hospitals in their network, forcing some people to drive over an hour for lab work, even when there's a hospital within a few miles of their home. When pressed about lack of access, Shaheen said, There are some hospitals that are not covered, unfortunately, and um, I I certainly hope that's going to change. Jean Shaheen promised us we could keep our doctors and our health care coverage. Now she hopes we can get to a local hospital? Call Senator Shaheen at 603-647-7500. Tell her we need more than hope. We need leadership. Paid for by Citizens for a Strong New Hampshire. Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Gerard at Large in the Morning. The Manchester area's only locally owned, locally operated, focused and interested, riveting radio show heard live every Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 on 90.7 FM WLMW New Hampshire Family Radio and available 24-7 live or archived 
at gerardatlarge.com. Be sure to tune in. This is the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. We're located at 8 North Main in Concord, New Hampshire. This is a repository for all things conservative and municipal. So if you have a problem in your town, your school, your budget committee, the right to know law, and now at the top of our list is voter fraud. you have a tip for us, some information for us, you want to join or help us out, cnht.org. Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Gerard at Large in the Morning. You're listening to Grok Talk. Grok TV.